Okay, today's video is what's wrong with my calculator. I wanted to put some explicatives in there, but I know how sensitive you are, so I'm not going to do that. But I had a student come to me today, and he was just losing his mind, and really smart guy, very, very smart student, lucky to have him, but his calculator was telling him lies, and one of the lies his calculator told him was this lie. This, he punched into his calculator, and it was a good calculator, like this one. He punched into his calculator, negative 2 squared, and his calculator said, well, Ken, that would be negative 4. But, well, let's investigate what happens here and what our answer should be and, and what it is. Um, what do you think happened when he put into his calculator negative 3 cubed? I think it put in negative 27, and then he was really confused because I think this is the right answer and this is the wrong answer, but so how come his calculator gives him the right answer sometimes and the wrong answer other times? In other words, what is wrong with my calculator? And let me promise you this, it's what's wrong with your calculator, not what's wrong with you. It, it really isn't you. So here we go. So we have this. We take our calculator in we're in the calculator part. I'm on a um, TI Inspire CAS CX. You can't see it, but there's the CX right there. So I'm just going to ask my calculator. This is a great calculator, but if I ask my calculator the same question, whoops, sorry about that. If I ask myself the same question that Ken asked his calculator today, I think I'll, what in the hell? Okay. If I ask my calculator this question, guess what I'm going to get? But we know that's the wrong answer, isn't it? Right? If I have a fifth grader that would say that that's not true, because we know that what this means, right? See, this is really confusing to people because, because we know that what this, the meaning of this is negative 2 times negative 2. And, of course, a negative times a negative is a positive, and 2 times 2 is 4. So why is our calculator doing this to us? Well, it's because our calculator is not very intelligent, and it needs for us to speak in very clear ways to it. What our calculator sees when we type in this, it sees this. It sees this negative sign right here is this one. And then our calculator puts x inside of a box. And here's that box. And then it does this. It, we said 2, so this 2 is this one. We said 2, and then squared. So our calculator sees this as two different problems. It sees negative like negative 1, like negative, times this. And we know PEMDAS. PEMDAS says that we do parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. So when our calculator looks at this problem, it's going to follow this algorithm, this set of rules. So it's going to do this first. And of course, 2 times, right, this is not 2 times 2. This, these 2's aren't being multiplied. But it's 2 factors of 2. So 2 times 2 is equal to 4. So it does this bit right here and it gets 4. And then it takes this multiplication sign here and puts it here, and this negative sign here, and of course, when you see a negative sign, it's a negative 1, and negative 1 times 4 equals negative 4. So the question is, how do we help our calculator to understand better what it is we want it to do? This is crucial, I, I swear to God. Why be great at calculus? Why be great at trig? Why be great at this incredibly big math? and get burned on something like this. So this is how we're going to avoid that. We're going to speak clearly to our calculator, very clearly. And the way that we can best do that is this. If this is the question you want to ask, make sure if, if the question you want to ask is, what is negative 2 squared? Just talk, speak slowly to your calculator and say, look, I want to know what negative 2. And there, you've quantified this for your calculator, squared is. And look what happens. Doesn't that look better? So Ken gets freaked out. He says, yeah, but when I did this, I got the right answer. Negative, whoops, sorry. This is my calculator. If you hit the neg this negative sign first, it goes against how to do this. Negative 3 cubed. So he does this. It's like, hey, that got, it got the right answer for that. Why, why did that work out well? It got the right answer for the wrong reason, didn't it? It got the right answer because it thought you meant this, and it just turned out to still be true. It thought you meant the opposite of, right, negative times 3 cubed. Well, 3 cubed is 27. 
and negative 1 times 27 gives us that negative 27, doesn't it? It didn't think you meant this. It did not think that he meant this, although the answer is the same. So I don't know, I hope, hopefully you're getting what I'm saying. It's getting the right answer for the wrong reason here. So just to be clear, this is my opinion. Just don't try to figure out when your calculator understands you and when it doesn't. Speak slowly to that thing and clearly because your math is far in excess of what your calculator's ability to free think is. Right? You have to do all the thinking for it. So what I would do is this. I would get the right answer for the right reason by just saying to my calculator, look, what I meant was this. I want to know what negative 3 cubed is. You see that the answers are the same, don't you? But I just want to be clear with you that the, these are both the right answers, but this is the right answer for the right reason. These are crucial things that on the SAT they'll kill you because you have to be able to trust your calculator and you can't be, oh my gosh, can you imagine having to second guess your calculator? Is my calculator functioning the way it's supposed to? So, I'm going to say it for the third time. You are ten times smarter than your calculator will ever be. So speak slowly and clearly to your calculator. If you have any questions, please um, Give, send me a comment. If there's something else that you realize, oh my gosh, you know what else is true, Charlie? If this, then this happens. Let me know, and I'll share it with as many people as possible because math is worth doing right, I think, isn't it? So, that's what we have. And uh, lastly, if you're like, yeah, but I'm using a Casio, or I'm using a different TI, almost all calculators are making this mistake because how could, then if, if they weren't, then how could you differentiate what you meant? Okay? So almost all, I want to say all, all graphing calculators have the ability to use parentheses, use them, uh, oh, it's a big word, judiciously. Okay, ho I really do hope this was helpful. If you have comments, let me know. And if there are things I can, that you want me to spread the word on, please let me know. I'll be glad to share. Thanks.